Hello explorers and welcome to another Java video and today I'm gonna give you a tip that is a little bit narrow if you need this skill then you uh, will probably find it's very useful but I know that many of you might not need this at all but it's good to know that you can do this with some of the tools and this is a little bit of a hack because I think this functionality might not be intended, but it's very nice to be able to do it. So if we have Eclipse, as I have here, it has an interesting feature in it that I really like. I'm using IntelliJ today when I'm uh, coding mostly, but this thing seems to be only a, be done in Eclipse because of its modularity. So what I can do here, I can actually set a breakpoint on line 17 here. And if I run this with the debugger, it will actually end at 17. That's great. We have done a break at line 17. And then you have a breakpoint here. And this breakpoint I can actually export. And I haven't seen that feature in any other um, of the IDEs that you can actually export your breakpoints and then import them again. So if you take this breakpoint here and I will export it out to a new file name, let's call that my test breakpoint and then switch over to Atom where I have my breakpoints here. Then I have this new my test breakpoint and it looks pretty much like this, so this is what gets exported. You first off have a breakpoints block, so this is all your breakpoints, so you know that what that you can import multiple if you like. Then we have my specific breakpoint, and in that breakpoint I have a resource which uh, actually points out which file this breakpoint has a connection to. But you can actually remove everything in this path if you like and just have a slash. Because this path is not important for the breakpoint to work. It's information that the application or um, Eclipse really want to be there. But to actually import it. But it's not something that it looks into when it actually stops execution. And this char start is also information that is will not look at. And char start here and char, char end, it will not look at those. This Java element handle ID, don't know what that does. It will not look at it. This message is required, but I can put anything in here. Anything. And it will still read it. And I see here, yeah, I'll keep the rest. And we, we stopped at line 17. Well, let's stop at line 14. We know that line exists. So let's push it back a bit. So let's go back to our Eclipse here. So we have a breakpoint at line 17. We will import our breakpoints again. So let's import my test. And after I've done that, uh, I will have a new breakpoint at line 14. It will not get any information about main string and so on after here. So let's try this out then. We stop our execution and then we run the debugger again. Wait! It stopped at line 14. This is a bit further up, so that might not be that impressive that we can put a new uh, line inside there and just say, well, we want to stop at new line. Well, let's do something that is a little bit harder. We go back here and see that I have actually a different application here or a different uh, class. So this is debug test two and on line six, I write hello world. So let's stop the execution of the old one switch over here. I will add a 2 over here and then change the line number to 6. 
that should create a breakpoint on the debug test 2 class on line number 6. So let's go back here. We have line number 6 here. I have no breakpoints in the GUI. So I will go into my debugger mode. I will import the breakpoints. Import them, my tests again. And then I get a breakpoint at line 6. If I go back to the Java console here, I will not see that breakpoint. But if I run the debugger for the bug test 2, it will actually stop at line 6 and tell me here you have your hello world and um, actually stop the execution so you can go from there. Then, now the, the interesting thing comes. If you have an ex a jar file that you have no control over, you have not the source code for this jar file. It might be legacy. Somebody might not work on this jar file anymore. The documentation might be very shady. You, you don't really know how it works. You just know that something you gave this jar file will not make it run. You have missed some information that is important for this jar file to work. So you just get a null pointer exception add a line number in the jar file and you can't really figure out why that happened and you want to debug this so for my example here i have actually opened up log4j in uh, gd gui which is a java de decompiler and just looked into this uh, file a little bit i find that i have if i run an info logger so i log into info I have a line of 663, which is inside of this category, which it will pass in the execution. So then we go back to our Atom again. We put in line number 663. We change the uh, our uh, name of the uh, of the actual. Uh, class name that we want to end up into Apache log for J category which was the name of that class and let's import that one into Eclipse again so we can test that out and let's import breakpoints import this again we will get a new breakpoint on category on line 663. So we stop the execution of the other application. We debug test 1. And debug test 1, you see here that I create a logger with log4j, a console logger. It stopped at my line uh, 14 that I had one as one of breakpoint. And then on line 20, I do this info. Um, Call so we will move forward. We stop at 17, which was the original breakpoint we set, and then we run again. And now it's a little bit hard to see here in the view, but we have actually stopped execution at line number 20, and then somewhere inside of the uh, class file for uh, the log4j and in Eclipse, it has actually uh, decompiled the code here as well so I see which line I am on in this uh, view as well which is quite nice but I couldn't put a breakpoint there because I can't open that file usually and sometimes you do, the, the, the decompiler in uh, Eclipse will not work either so you can't put a breakpoint inside of the, these classes and then I can just continue the execution in the file if I like and if I can't see it in here, I can switch back and forth to this view in that this compiler back to Eclipse and so on. So this is quite handy if you want to put a breakpoint in a class that you don't have the source code for and, and you can't do a real debugging in that uh, code. And, and sometimes you really need to debug a third party jar files in order to find how to change your application to work with those libraries.
So I hope that you found this video informative, that you learned something of this video. I know that this is a very niche uh, information and knowledge, so it might not be something that you are interested in. But if you found this uh, interesting and helpful, please give me a comment. Tell me if... Uh, Tell me about how you do debugging on external libraries. And I really hope to see you in the next video.